Hi everybody, this is Tor Storley and I am back with another video. In this video I thought I'll take a look at how you can work with markdown tables. I was working on a different video presentation. As part of that one I had to create some tables in Jupyter Notebook. So I got a little sidestepped because I discovered a few things as far as working with those tables in Markdown. Some of it is not that obvious and, and there's a couple of different ways you can actually go ahead and create these tables and also style them. So today I thought we'd take a look at how you can actually work with styling markdown tables inside a Jupyter Notebook. So I created this notebook, styling markdown tables. And in this notebook, I laid out some different methods you can use to actually create these tables inside a cell in the notebook. So the very first thing you need to do in order to create a table, you need to add a cell. So if you click on this plus button here, you get a new cell, but this is not the right type of cell. You need a markdown cell. So either you go to the menu here and choose markdown, or you can choose this button here, open the command palette. And when you look here, you can see there is some different shortcut keys you can use. And one of them is change cell to markdown. It says command mode M. Now on my machine, it happens to be the con instead of control key, I use the escape key on my keyboard. So you, you probably have to try out and see how, how it works on your computer. Another thing is if you search for code, you can see change cell to code. That's uh, whatever key you use, control or shift or escape or whatever it is, and the letter Y. So M and Y. So in my case, I can toggle between if I do the escape key, Right now, it's an, you can tell it's a code cell because you can see this in here in, in uh, the brackets. If I do escape M, now it's a markdown cell. And then escape Y, now it's a code cell. So let's make a markdown cell, and now it's a markdown. So what I can do now is I created a markdown cell here, and in order to do anything in markdown, you can just start typing. So here, for example, is an H3, equivalent to an H3 in uh, HTML. Here's an H2 and here's an H1 type of thing. So whatever you type something and you hit control enter, now you can see there's the cell. So let me cut that cell. All right, so this is how you can in Markdown create a table, a very basic table. So if you look a little closer at this, you can see there's some symbols. There's this uh, colon dash. It should actually be, now it works with one, but it should really be three of these. So this is left aligned, this is right aligned, and this is centered. So if you look at my table, you start with this symbol and then whatever your first field name is, and then another symbol. Now you don't necessarily have to have it lined up like this, it's just easy to read. So the first one is where you put your headers. So this will be the header. Determine how you, you want your table to look, the information in the table. You can see here, name is centered, address is left aligned, and then zip is right aligned. Here you can see I actually have a table. So if I open that cell by double clicking, you can see that is the table you see above here, with the exception of those things I fixed. Now when I hit Control Enter, it will create that table. The name is centered, you can see that here. The address is left aligned here, and the zip is right aligned. Now in order to style one of these tables, what you want to do, depending on how you're going to do it, a couple of ways you can do this. You can uh, use this technique where you have a, a percentage, percentage HTML, and then you basically have a style tag and an end style tag, and in between here you set up your styling. Now what will happen is when I execute this cell, every table in this, in this Jupyter Notebook, with the exception of some ones I'm going to show you in a little bit, will be formatted in that same style because it applies to all the tables as you can see here. If I want to style this particular one here and the one below because they're all the same now, I can use this inline technique with the HTML and style it that way. So what I'm saying here is I say make the table left aligned and then make it 100% of the cell width. Instead of it taking up just a little space in the center here, we're going to try to make it much larger, much more across the cell itself. And then I make some colors here. Then I simply finish it up with the, the color red and center for the rows. So I got a header, I got a row formatting here using CSS. So when I hit Control Enter now, you can see this table and this table 
was changed. So I'm going to restart and clear the outputs. All right, so that was that table. And I applied it to all the tables using this technique here. You can also style individual parts of the table, even though, if you look at it, this is still a markdown table. You can see the, the, the structure here. However, what you can see here is that I have added a div. So I use an HTML div, and you want to use this technique when you actually want to specialize the styling of an individual table. So it doesn't apply to all the tables on your page, for example. And you can do that by using this technique. You create a div, you give it an ID, and then an end tag, and then one space in between the div and the table itself. So what happens now is that I can style this table by structuring like this. This uh, means the ID of this div, but then I say plus table. So that will pick up the table below the div here. And then I have some styling for the table. As you can see, I left aligned it. I use 80% width, no borders, and uh, some different fonts. But then I go ahead and manipulate individual elements in the table. I get a div, I refer to the table, and then I refer to the body of the table, the rows, and then the first TD child, meaning the first column of that table. It's going to be this column under the name here. So that's the one I'm going to style and I'm going to make it bold. And then I have some additional ones where I go into individual cells, as you can see. Here I'm choosing the body of the table. I choose the second row and I choose the second TD, second cell in the table, if you will. And then I want to make that larger, so you can see it here. And then I have some additional stuff here. I want to make sure that, that I can fit the text within that table. So I'm styling each column's width. And that's what I'm doing down here. The first column, the first TH child, I make 20%. The second, 60%, which is that middle cell here. And then a third one, I make 20%. And then I simply have some uh, individual styling for like even rows. So I want those to be a slightly different shade. And then I just have the rows themselves styled here. So let's see what that will look like when I actually run this code. So I'm going to run it and then I scroll up. Well, it helps to execute the cell. So let me execute the cell. Notice it styled that table. I get a nice background color here. Well, nice in my eyes at least. But notice that this address here, the second row, the second cell. Notice the font size, I raised it up. And notice the alternate shading on, on the rows due to this even formatting here. So right there, I was able, using a div, to custom style this table here. Here is another one. In this one, I'm referring to my table two. So if I open that up, you can see this is a table ID of my table two. Now, let me run this. The reason why I can, can run this like this now is because I created a HTML style table. You can see I'm building it using HTML. I'm not using the markdown technique. And therefore I can set the ID directly and it becomes a little easier to work with. So if you look at the code now, I'm referring directly to that table. So that's the second approach you can use by referring to the table ID using an HTML style table. The formatting here, I'm not gonna get into all the details of it because I already showed you some of the formatting on the previous one. To use this technique, you import HTML from the IPython core display module. And then I'm opening up a CSS file that is located in this folder, and I'm going to read that in here. And then I'm using this replacement technique. So whatever is in that style sheet will go in here inside these two brackets. So you have a style and then the content of each of these style sheets. So what happens when I run this now, let me just clear out everything so it looks clean. Okay. So when I run this now, notice these tables here. You can see they get formatted nicely. There's some uh, uh, first column got bolded, etc. That's because this content was loaded into this style section of this. So if you have a lot of style sheets, you can style up your table. For example, I can say, okay, let's style it according to uh, style sheet two, control enter. So now I got a different table. Four, there's a number four, and here is a five. Now they look very similar, but uh, you can style them any way you want to, of course. Six. 
So now I have a little different looking one, as you can see. It's got rounded corners and so forth. So this, those style sheets, they exist in here because I'm referring to this Markdown Style Sheets folder in my code. So if you open up one of them, for example, here, this is kind of what they look like. All you have to do is basically start referring to whatever. So I have like for a generic table like this, but what I'm getting is you, you can style this with individual IDs too. So it would only affect certain tables. So in other words, I could say like if I used a div technique, for example, I could say something like that. So as you can see here, you use this kind of technique like I displayed to you before. Yeah, it's up to you. Now you have uh, some different methods you can use to style up your, your markdown tables. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you. And I hope you liked this video. And if you do, please subscribe and like. And I will be back with another video in not too long from now. Thank you so much for watching.